Let's talk about call-outs versus call-ins, mm -hmm. which I know is becoming quickly some folks' favorite chapter. <laughs> um, I thought it was such a genius distinction, and it's fascinating. Can you share with us what both of those terms mean? I think a lot of people, if they have not actually heard the term call-out, they've just seen it happen. Yeah. Where a celebrity says something awful, you know, whether intentionally or unintentionally, racist or sexist or homophobic, online or in an interview or, you know, in a movie, for example, and they are rightfully criticized for it. And so we see think pieces, we see long Twitter threads, which I am so guilty. I love a Twitter thread, <laughs> um, where people are saying, like, you did this thing. This is terrible. We all need to talk about why this is bad. Um, but it happens in a public way. So it is a conversation that lots of people are participating in. And again, oftentimes that is necessary, right? Like I don't have a personal relationship with a Kanye West, for example, right? So the criticisms that are happening around the things that he is saying are happening in a public forum. Um, I mean, John Legend texted him and then it became like a big thing where Kanye was tweeting out the text, right? So when you need to actually call someone in is when you have a personal relationship with them. So you might text them or you might take them out to coffee or pick up the phone. Uh, or even if it happens on a, a social platform, but in a private place, like a Facebook message or a DM, in my experience, it doesn't always work. But I find that it makes the conversation a little bit easier if everybody isn't watching, if, mm -hmm. if everybody is not participating in it, right? And I've had times where I've had family members put their foot in their mouth on, their, on my Facebook page, and then suddenly somebody I went to college with is like, oh, I'm, I have time today. And I'm like, my <laughs> dad doesn't know who you are. And now they're like in my Facebook comments arguing with my family member, and then somebody else jumps in and suddenly just – I liken it to like a WWE match. Like I don't even watch WWE, but like it's a performance, right? Like yeah. everybody's like, <laughs> like jumping in, <laughs> and they're like, "I oh got tag me in," and then they're like jumping, like someone's in feathers. Like it's just like a whole <laughs> thing, and the person who might have really screwed up, yes, is just confused, and they don't know who all of these people are. And so, if you take them aside and you say, "Look," here's why what you said was really not okay. Let's talk about this. Um, again, I have found, because people did that for me, yeah, right? right? When I was being descended on because I screwed up on Anderson Cooper, I was lucky that somebody pulled me aside. A few people messaged me and they were like, read this article, like read this book. Um, and so there's something really um, enriching about being able to be that for somebody else. Yes. Because the call-outs can be very positive in the sense that, again, the message can reach lots of people. It can start a global conversation. But oftentimes the person at the, the very center of it, they just tune it out, especially when all that other nasty stuff starts coming in. You have some um, great questions, and I will share them if that's okay. Sure. The six call-out rules. Number one, what's the issue? Number two, what's at stake? Three, I love this one. Do I have all the details? That's a big one because on the internet, you know, you can't unring a bell. And I have seen and I have been on in the, the wrong on this one where something happens and, uh, you know, a, a great example or a terrible example was after the Boston bombing, mm -hmm. there were people on Reddit who were trying to figure out who it was and they were going through all the photos and they found a photo of some guy and they decided that he was the guy. And they got his Facebook and they put his name all over the internet and he was not the guy. But you couldn't unring the bell. Wow. And now suddenly he had to close all the social media. He was getting death threats. I mean, the police said he had nothing to do with it. But again, you didn't have all the facts. And then people felt like they were trying to do the right thing by sharing it. Right. They were posting it and they were like, if you know this guy, do something. So their hearts were in the right place, sure. But they didn't have all the information. They yeah. were sharing something that was going viral at the time, and and it can be very easy to get swept up in that. Um, and again, I, I say that as someone that has made that mistake. The next question is also a really important one. Why am I doing this? Right. Why am I doing this? And then I'll, I'll share the last two and we can discuss what are the best and worst case scenarios that could follow this call out? 
And would it be better to call in instead? And I think that last one speaks to something that all of us need to practice more is that pause. I think that's so important because that's not our inclination online. Everything moves so fast and something's going viral and everyone's like, I got to say something about this right now. And then you realize everybody's saying the same thing or things that just are not contributing in any way. They're just speaking to speak. Yeah. And oftentimes when like this massive call out is happening, everybody's like, let's make jokes, let's make memes. And sometimes they're super funny. I enjoy a lot of them. But sometimes I think, gosh, it's going to really suck if we all descended on this person and they actually didn't do anything wrong or we got the we got the wrong person or we don't have all the facts. Um, and also I think thinking about why are we doing this is really important because I have found personally that I would make a call out and I would be sitting there thinking, wow, look at how many retweets this got. <laughs> Instead of like, well, then that that's what I did this for, was for retweets. I'm not even thinking about what the real issue is here. And I see that happening all of the time, where you see that people are chasing likes and retweets, and they're going on and on and on about this issue that happened. And you realize, well, you don't actually care about the consequences of this person's actions or, or their words, what you care about is making a joke that's going to raise your profile and getting really great engagement on your Twitter. Um, and I just, that really breaks my heart often because I don't think, you know, a, a popular Twitter profile or, you know, a pop in Instagram is not changing the world. Like it's not making the world a better place. It's gratifying you in that moment. But in the long run, I don't necessarily know that it's worth it to slander someone or or just completely embarrass someone for the purpose of making you more popular, making you feel good. 